A recent study by researchers at Virginia Tech finds a rising number of young people are experiencing gender dysphoria, claiming that their so-called gender identity does not match their biological sex. A study published in the journal General Psychiatry analyzed data from 2017 to 2022 and found during that time period, the prevalence of gender dysphoria rose while the average age of diagnosis dropped. What's more, a higher percentage of girls claimed to be so-called transgender than boys. And joining us now to talk about this and more is John Schweppe, policy director at the American Principles Project. John, good to be with you. Uh, first off, your thoughts on this study and why you think the numbers for gender dysphoria or what some call transgenderism are rising. Well, this is an important study and it echoes much of what we've seen. You know, this is a social contagion. We have to recognize that. And, you know, we're talking about girls, teenage girls, often in social presser situations, uh, you know, being pushed down this road. And we have adults that are also pushed down this road. So. You know, I think it's really important that we enact law to protect kids from this type of thing. You know, we're talking about puberty blockers at eight years old, prospects hormones at 14 years old, and often even surgery at 15, 16 years old. This is ridiculous, and, and obviously we shouldn't be putting kids under the knife. Yeah, Not another thing. Happen. Absolutely, John. Another thing that stood out to me was the amount of girls who wanted, you know, to change their gender. Apparently, the researchers suggested it was because girls who displayed what is seen as traditionally masculine tendencies were, were seen as the leader of their class or were more likely to be accepted by their peers. Now, to me, this is kind of a baffling explanation as to why a girl would want to be seen as a boy in this day and age. Help us unpack this one, John. It's hard to un unpack, honestly. I mean, we're talking about uh, gender stereotypes, which, you know, even 20, 30 years ago, we were starting to move away from, you know, trying to modernize or liberalize or whatever. So uh, I, I think we really are kind of calling for a fast and unfortunately something that's really hurting a lot of people. And, you know, it's important that we put lots of place to stop this from happening. Yeah, and meanwhile, um, at Ivy League Brown University, nearly 40% of students there identify as so-called LGBTQ+, and that's according to the Brown Daily Herald, that's the university paper. As to the reason why so many students view themselves this way, one student told the paper it was because of a more openness towards queer people. John, do you think that is the reason, or, or do you think there's something else behind all of this? Well, I think there's something very nefarious to this, actually. The reality is that in colleges, uh, it's very difficult to not be a minority on, you know, the, the spectrum of, of all this affirmative action that's taking place. And so it's very advantageous for you uh, from a social perspective, from an academic perspective, to identify as some sort of minority. So this is something that I think a lot, of, a lot more people are doing. Uh, Part of it's peer pressure and, and trying to fit in socially. But, you know, there's something else going on here. Too. John, we have about a minute left or so, but curious what else you're following. Well, right now, I think the biggest thing is this movement to uh, make sure that kids aren't accessing porn online. We actually saw that here in Virginia as well. We have seven states who have passed uh, age verification laws to protect kids under the age of 18 from accessing online pornography. This seems like the issue that's really going to take off in the next year. And we expect probably a dozen more states next year to pass laws like this. And hopefully we'll get to a point where, you know, kids are not able to access this content. Sadly, right now, the average age pornography usage is something like 11 years old. So if we are able to protect kids, it would be a huge win. Absolutely. John, thanks so much for coming on. Always appreciate your insights. Good to see you. Hey, thanks so much for having me.